I'm Justin Broderick and we are Godflesh and we are playing Supersonic 2010. on us tonight. Um, I think there's probably just our own, uh, I think it's just like, what's a better word for self-pressure? <laughs> Then come up to North Wales where I live in Abergelly and we rehearsed in Liverpool actually of all places. Um, but I was just really on, on the edge, you know, the whole time, just, just like I get like that about doing this anyway. Sometimes I just feel like I could I could just go live up a tree somewhere near the forests where I am and just run from it all, do you know what I mean? And other times I want to immerse myself completely in this culture, you know. Ben hasn't really done this, you know, for about ten years. Whereas I've, I've still kept making music all the time. And with Yazer, it's became much more. It's a much more inverted sound. You know, I'm not even used to assaulting like this anymore, or attacking. But for me, I, I always used to say that Godflesh is ultimately defensive. It's using something so strong and powerful as a defense. <laughs> Our music is a, a definite reaction against the environment. I mean, the part of Birmingham I grew up in was, was quite horrible until I found people like Ben and a couple of other guys who were Ben's friends. Did I actually find some place with people, you know, and some like-minded sort of individuals? That, um, they helped for me transcend the environment again, you know. And it was—I was already infatuated with music that was, you know, basically either confrontational or bleak. And things like Throbbing Gristle or Killing Joke or, you know, whatever. In many urban musics in a way, you know. I did feel my life was, was like that, but I was so sensitive to it and so much wanted to es es escape it. The music was an expression of what we felt, you know, the frustration, the anger, uh, feeling crushed. Um, yeah. Which in itself was very liberating. Yeah. And I think, you know, I can remember we... we Formed and we recorded our first album up the road, about two miles away from, from where we're playing yeah. tonight. And um, it's strange when I haven't done this in this context, like Justin said, since 1991, I haven't played in Birmingham yet. It, it's brought it all back. Yeah. It's, it's brought it all back. Yeah, really. Um, it's actually quite overwhelming in a way, isn't it? Overwhelming set of emotions going on. We both feel honoured to be part of the Homer Metal thing, uh, you know, and I, I really uh, appreciate what Homer Metal is trying to do in terms of recognising the musical heritage of Birmingham and the things that came from it and the influence that the city undoubtedly had on all these bands. And for us to be part of it, to be recognised, is, is really special. When you consider who we're like associated with, and some of the um, the old masters, so to speak. It's beyond honour then, it's a, it gets quite strange. 
in a way it's fairly surreal. I mean Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath, we obviously wouldn't even be sitting here without those two bands. So it's like, even if we don't sound obviously exactly like them in any way, it's just, if it, even if it's groove, texture and, you know, it's where, I mean, it certainly wouldn't exist without early Black Sabbath. So. It's fantastic that, you know, what we've done, I know the band Glad have done, uh, is, is acknowledged as such. And that's not about trying to champion what we do, that's just recognising the roots of it all and where we came from. Birmingham has been dismissed so long as it's been this dirty, grimy, industrial place. But part of that environment is uh, responsible for bands like us and, and Black Sabbath and the Napalm Death. We certainly didn't set out to be, have this ambition to be sort of part of some you know, tremendous lineage or any of this sort of stuff. To be honest, the last time we ever played Birmingham was about 1991. So, and it was, it was, it is still Ben's hometown, and it was my hometown up until, you know, I was brought, raised, born and raised in Birmingham, and I left in like 1994. It makes obvious sense, you know, to be playing where our roots come from. The whole inspiration is, is this city, really. You know, it's such a huge part of what we are. <laughs> Our stage from about seven o'clock onwards is, is full of people that I champion myself or their close friends, which is like Cloaks and King Midas Sound. And King Midas Sound is Kevin Martin, who's also the bug, and me and him worked together for years as a techno animal. And prior to that, I was even in his band, which was just God. Um, so we've got massive history. Cloaks is someone I'm sort of, he's young, you know, he's still, well, he's just turned 30 actually, but um, he's a, Again, expressing for me a, 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 another modern vision of what urban areas do, you know, you know what I mean, what they can do to the soul and how destroying they can be. That's what I like about this festival, because it's so eclectic, it doesn't conform to the norm, it doesn't play it safe, and I think that's been part of our heritage, you know, we had a bit of a battle, you know, yeah. we trying to do this sort of music and the environment was in. Metal was around at the time, but it was very, Either fast or it was, you know, bands like Judas Priest, which we weren't really like. Um, so, for me, it's good to be part of that, and I do feel something common with some of the people here because they've got that same shared sensibility of <coughs> breaking down barriers. You know, yeah. the music might be different, the style might be different, but you know, for, for some of them, the battles are the same. Because it was a, it was a big battle. I mean, Godflesh in 1988, people just did not understand this music. You know, we were playing with hardcore bands and stuff. You know what I mean? And people just could not understand what this slow, low-tuned, drum machine-driven angst was about. You know what I mean? People just didn't get it then. I mean, now this is easily digestible in the age we live in and stuff. You know, people can hear something from across the world in one minute. You know what I mean? There's none of the search. There's none of the, the journey that's involved. It's very easy now. You know, but um, I mean, you know, hair metal and poodle metal and all this stuff was big when we were breaking. You know what I mean? We'd be in Kerrang magazine. You turn the page and it would just be. Guys with bouffants, page after page. You'd have us in the middle of it. Do you know what I mean? It was just like <laughs> Def Leppard, you know, and then Godfrey. Uh, Saxon. Saxon, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was just like.
environment Scarflesh used to play, we were very much the odd, odd band out, you know. We've, we've, we've done tours in America with, you know, completely conventional heavy metal bands, you know, and, and we are the freaks. We have played in front of, like, you know, 12,000 Danzig fans or something where most of the front row are throwing sharp and one cent coins at us, do you know what I mean? And lit cigarettes and stuff like this. And it would be a, a war, you know. It would feel like a fucking war. And it was actually, it would amplify what this music should be about to some extent, you know. But still, I mean, you could, one could argue then, well, surely playing tonight you feel too comfortable in this environment. But I couldn't be, for me, it's bringing back a lot of childhood stuff and I actually feel like as if it's, again, an excuse to exercise old demons.